So this is long overdue. Um, and I filmed this earlier, but I wasn't happy with it because it went over five minutes and my, uh, I was in 1080p 60. Um, so I couldn't go over five minutes without having to render it together and I decided it would just be quicker to, uh, retake it in, uh, 1080p 30 rather than having to edit all the clips together. Um, and it would probably be a better experience because you wouldn't get the jar as it goes from, uh, clip to clip. So... I finished the uh, PyDA, and I actually finished it uh, probably uh, around two weeks ago at this point. Um, and again, I just haven't had a chance to refilm because I've been quite busy. Um, but it's finished now, so you have the slide switch to turn it on. Uh, you have a micro USB there that you could use if you don't want to run it off battery for some reason. Just leave the slide switch off. Um... HDMI here, um, which you have to enter a terminal command to uh, disable the LCD and re-enable the HDMI. Um, and I really want to get a bash script for that that I can just have on the desktop. Um, but the problem is the terminal command launches a different script. So I have a script referring to a script and for some reason it doesn't like that. Um, but I'm probably just doing something wrong. Uh, audio output jack, and all the USB and uh, Ethernet. I think I've already showed this. Um, the stylus is too far in right now because it's been sitting for a while and it got knocked. Um, that's something that I still do have to deal with. I'll probably just end up sticking some piece of like scrap material back there. Um, but this still lifts off. It's just a tight pressure fit. Um, we can see our charge controller there, the battery and the stylus, um, and again, the uh, I'm just probably going to put some piece of plastic back there to uh, keep the stylus from going too far back. Um, the charge controller I'm using is just out of a cheapy power bank. Um... I don't know, I think I've probably covered a lot of this stuff already. Um, really the only change was I went through a lot of iterations for this cover. Um, and I still have some of them. Um, but the early ones I filmed, I had them already here and I don't have them now, so I'm gonna have to jump cut and grab them. Okay, so I got them all now. So this was the first iteration. Um, you can see it doesn't have the stylus hole. Um... Up here, it's pretty similar, but it's thinner on the sides. Um, it printed better. This one warped, but I gave up on reprinting it. Um, and the warps aren't so bad that it's unusable. It's more just an aesthetic thing. Um, but it kept warping. Um, I think there was some issue with the white filament. Um, because I wasn't having any issues with the black filament. But the white filament's been sitting for longer, so I don't know if... The, the white filament was also bubbling, which, um, this one it's not that bad on, but there's some here, which I wonder if that's due to moisture and grass. Um, because, yeah, the white filament's been sitting a lot longer than this black filament. But I printed the earliest ones in black filament because I knew they wouldn't actually be used. Um, you can see the sides on this are a lot thinner. Um, so there was more of a gap. I fixed that up. Um... And it didn't print great, but that's because my print settings weren't all that good. This one printed a lot better. This one I could have used had it had a stylus hole. Uh, and this was basically the final design. So I said, okay, this is basically the final design. I just need to add a stylus hole, um, and then it'll be done. And this one, again, this one printed better than the one I'm actually using. There's still a tiny bit of bubbling, but not nearly as bad as this one. And there's no warping or anything. Um, so this one... You know, I could have used had I... Oh, dear. Tripod fell over. Um, there we go. Um, so I'm like, oh, I could have used uh, this one. Um, so then I decided to print it in white. Um, with a stylus hole. I'm going to A, put the stylus hole on the wrong side, and B, this one printed terribly. Actually, no, the stylus hole is on the right side. No, wait, so I went to print it in white. And this one printed fine. It adhered to the bed fine. Some bubbles, but not too bad. 
but the stylus hole was on the wrong side. So then I printed this one with the stylus hole on the right side, and then this is when I started running into problems. Uh, this one warped a little bit, not quite as bad as this one, but this one has really, really bad um, bubbling. Um, and the um, strength was really bad. It snapped quite quickly. So I reprinted this one, and this one, the strength seems to be better, the bubbling's better, but it warped a lot. And then at that point, I'm just like, I give up. Um, so I went with this, which is fine. Um, so now I'm just going to talk about why I bothered building this. Um, because it's not super practical. I mean, it's somewhat practical. It's uh, I, I have used it a couple of times. Mostly to do uh, overnight FTP uploads because it's so small and self-contained, um, and low power consumption. Um, but I wasn't running it off the battery there. Um, but I built it because there are times where um, I wanted a um, small Linux-powered device, and I can run Debian on my phone using something like Debian No Root. I have an Android phone that. Um, Debian No Root's a great app, it's open source, uh, lets you run Debian on your phone, um, without needing to root your phone. Um, so I can run Debian on my phone, but, you know, it's not quite the same, I don't get, X11 isn't really supported, um, if you need X11, which, obviously I have X11 running on here, um, and... The keyboard's a little bit weird. I mean, the keyboard's a little bit weird on this, but it's not quite as bad as it is on my phone. Um, which I'm gesturing to the phone there because it's what's filming and it looks silly. But um, anyway, um, so I get X11 support on this. Um, and I also just get Ethernet so I can troubleshoot networking issues without having to pull down a laptop with an Ethernet port, which... Uh, most modern laptops, including my ThinkPad, don't have. Um, so that's actually quite useful. Um, though I do have a USB to Ethernet that I use with my ThinkPad a lot. Um, here it is. Um, but, I mean, it's actually useful well, occasionally. Um, and I could have bought a pocket chip, but I didn't like how it wasn't, I didn't like how it was based around the chip, because the chip has its own set of, um, issues with, um, with being underpowered. 512 megs of RAM and its CPU is not satisfactory to me. Um, it works for terminal applications, but again, I could already run, run terminal applications on my phone. Um, and the other thing is, if I wanted to SSH into this from a desktop or from my phone, I can, and I have used that occasionally, because uh, due to reasons with school and software compatibility, I often have to run Windows on my uh, desktop. I could maybe try Wine, but... I already own a Windows license, um, so whenever I'm doing school stuff, I'm pretty much always in Windows, um, and Linux is for my personal stuff, and I almost like it that way, because it's sandbox, it keeps my personal stuff away from my, uh, school stuff. Um, but when I'm in Windows, if I, if I don't feel like rebooting, I could maybe use a virtual machine, or also if I just want to access information, um, on this, I, I have found myself SSHing into this a lot, because I can just slide the switch on and plop it down on my desk and SSH in. Um, so, Brian Lunduk called the pocket chip the ultimate Linux PDA, and for him it is, and it's probably one of the only commercially available Linux PDAs. Um, but for me, this is my ultimate Linux PDA, um, and it costs around what a pocket chip would, um, and I had fun building it. Um... And that's that. It's also more pocketable than a pocket chip. Um, though not by much due to its unwieldy um, thickness. I have compared it to an iPhone 4 before, but again, I don't have an iPhone 4 down here to compare it to anymore. Um, 
So this is done. You won't really be seeing it um, anymore here. But I just figured I should tell you the status of it before I uh, put it into um, more regular use and stop showing it here. Uh, these 3D printed parts, some of them are probably going to be recycled, but some of them I might keep as like, I went from this, to this, to this, no, to, to this, to this, or no, other way around. Um, and then finally to this. That's not really all in frame. There's not much I can do about that. There, that's a little bit better. Um, I might make that the thumbnail. That looks kind of nice. I'm going to take a picture of it so I can upload a custom thumbnail. There we go. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'm really rambling at this point. There's no point in wasting any more time. So, bye.